Hi, I'm Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness, and in this edition of Autism Fitness Concepts, I'm going to be talking about approximations. It's what we may look at when an athlete first starts doing a movement, and it's going to give us a good indication of where to go next with our progression or more likely regression. Check it out. An approximation is our athlete's interpretation of how a movement should be performed. Now, the approximation is often due to a physiological or a kinesthetic and, or even a cognitive deficit in understanding inherently and, and having a body awareness of how that movement should be performed. And it's our job as coaches and instructors to ensure that that athlete has the environment set up and has the cueing necessary to perform that exercise to the best of their current ability level. Now, an approximation often occurs because the, the athlete does not yet have the strength, the stability, the flexibility, the motor planning to perform that exercise to what we call baseline four criteria mastery. And if you want more, on, on that concept, we've also done an Autism Fitness Concepts video all about that. So with uh, criteria for baseline mastery, what we're looking at is this is the level of performance at which we can progress an exercise or make it more challenging. If the athlete isn't performing to that criteria yet, there's no reason to start progressing the exercise, making it more challenging, adding other variables, adding variety for the sake of adding variety. That's not what we're out to do. What we're out to do is make sure that the athlete has satisfied the prerequisite for independent performance of that particular exercise and then we can move on. But there's no sense in, in moving on and making it more challenging or adding all this variety if the athlete hasn't been able to master the first stage of this exercise. Often what we see with the autism population is what we call N block movement and that's E-N, first word, B-L-O-C, that's the second word, block. And it functions or we can, we'll can observe it in a way much like it sounds. It's this blocky, uh, very, very basic movement. With cone touches, for exa example, we can have our athlete who is standing and then we'll just touch the cone and then step to the next cone. So the movement isn't very fluid. It's not what we would call uh, really technically precise or, or good looking motor planning. So what we want to do is to continue to build on the, the skills that the athlete is currently demonstrating. What's good about an approximation is that we know the athlete is trying. So in this case where they're at least performing uh, to the best of their current ability, the exercise, they're motivated enough or cooperated enough or on task enough that they're following the directions. Now, the goal is not just having the athlete on task and performing the exercise, but performing it at criteria for baseline mastery. And in order to get them there, in order to bridge that gap, we have to figure out what are the uh, qualitative skills, what, what makes sense in their programming that's gonna get them, that's going to bridge them from where they are now to a, an appropriate goal that we set for them. We see this a lot with scoop throws where an athlete will hold the ball at pelvis level and then just do an upper body movement to get the ball across to their partner. What we're really after in that movement for the athlete is getting them to hinge back and use their hips and, and be able to get into that neutral spine position. But they may not be able to do that at first. So rather than say, oh, they can do what they can do and we're gonna leave it at that, we say they can do what they can do and we want to find a, an appropriate and meaningful way to get them to the next stage. When we talk about an appropriate and meaningful way, sometimes that's going to be a physical prompt Often we can fade it back and use a visual cue. And this comes down to consistency. We may be providing the same physical or visual prompt for an athlete over and over and over again. And then what happens over time is one day it just clicks 
for them and they get it. And this can take a few sessions, this can take a few weeks of sessions, this can take months, sometimes it can take years, but we wanna make sure that we are consistent in our coaching and that the athlete is progressively starting to get the movement. And there are a few really specific uh, coaching cues or coaching concepts that we can incorporate as well that can be the difference maker for them staying where they are right now in skill development and moving on to the next stage. What we don't want to do is when we see this end block or we, when we see these approximations is just start progressing well beyond the current capability of that particular athlete because that is not going to satisfy the strength or stability or motor planning deficits that we need to clear up in order to add more of a challenge to this activity, in order to decide that we're going to add exponential variables to this. So we're not just adding more of a challenge, we're not just adding variety for the sake of changing it up. There's no need to change it up when the athlete has not yet satisfied the prerequisite. Coming back to the idea of an approximation, uh, the athlete may understand this exercise as our expectation is them to perform this level. So we do want to provide reinforcement and positive behavior support around what they can do right now. And we don't want to make the mistake of starting with giving negative input to this, especially when the athlete doesn't have the skill yet. So the idea of saying, oh, not that way, or you're not doing it right, or you can do better than that. We don't know as a coach whether they actually can do better than that yet. And oftentimes, once we've been working with an athlete for a, a, a good am, uh, amount of sessions, we have, or we should have, a solid understanding of where their physical capabilities lie right now. So to say you can do better than that is, first of all, categorically false. They they don't have that skill just yet. And saying that is probably not going to enhance their, their motivation or their adaptive skills. It's not gonna get them to want to participate more. What we need to do is coach what is in front of us right now. And what's in front of us is going to be a variation, or again, that athlete's interpretation of that movement pattern. And our job is to make sure we know what an appropriate cue or what an, appro uh, an appropriate prompt is going to be in order to have them perform that movement correctly. And it may be the case again that we have to continue with the same prompt and try fading it back. We may need to reintegrate that prompt also. Let's see if we can fade it back to a visual prompt and oh, if that doesn't work, we may need to go back with a physical prompt on occasion uh, in, in order to have them perform that exercise slightly better each time. So we're looking at, uh, in the interim, we're looking at these short in incremental progressions so that the athlete does develop the strength, does develop the stability, does develop that skill set so that they can perform the movement better and get closer and closer to criteria for baseline mastery at that point which we can actually progress the exercise and make it more challenging. So the, the approximation means that from an adaptive perspective, our athlete is at least on task, they're at least motivated, and then from a physical perspective, they probably don't have the skill set yet. So our, uh, our impetus as a coach, as an instructor, is to make sure we know what that exercise, what that movement should look like, where the athlete is in comparison to what, the move, uh, what that movement should be, how it's benefiting them or how it should benefit them, and take the time to make sure that we're, we are creating an appropriate regression and appropriate prompting and cueing so the athlete is enhancing their skills over time. Uh, an approximation is, again, not going to be quite what we're seeking, with that exercise and it's certainly not going to be where we stop with it and say oh this is as well as they can do sure it's as well as they can do maybe right now but three weeks or six weeks or six months from now if we're programming and we're coaching appropriately maybe they will reach criteria for baseline mastery so we never quite know what the highest level of performance our athlete is is going to plateau at 
So it makes sense to set small goals over time. Know where our athlete is right now. Know what we're observing. Know what we're looking at with respect to the movement quality of a particular exercise. And then set appropriate goals for coaching, cueing, prompting, and fading. So eventually that athlete has that movement independently mastered and we can move on and do some more creative and challenging things with that exercise. So that's a little bit about approximations. Um, know what you're looking at when you're looking at each one of your athletes performing an exercise. If you want to get more in deep, if you want to join the movement for movement, become an autism fitness level one certified pro. The link to all of our upcoming certification seminars is in the description. I'm Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness. Thanks for watching.